Hey, everybody. Did you know the Passionate Health Advocate Show now has video? That's right. We now have a YouTube channel where you can listen and watch our latest episodes. Subscribe to the Passionate Health Advocate Show YouTube channel to stay up to date with our program. Frustrated with your pain or injury? That sucks, but I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Denise DeShutler and I'm a body worker and educator. Why is it so hard to find the care we need to feel better? Most of my clients have asked that question for years until we started working together. Now I'm gonna help you find those answers. I'll explore different health disciplines and chat with talented practitioners. We'll share our insights and practical advice to help you get the results you need to feel good again. Because seeking the right care for your health can be a pain in the arse. But with me, your wellness journey will turn into a fun-filled adventure. Buckle up, baby, for the Passionate Health Advocate Show. Welcome, listeners, and thanks for joining. I'm happy you're here. Today, we are going to a place where you can become medication and migraine-free. Let's buckle up. Welcome to the land of where you shine like the real you. We are searching for Dr. Meg Mill, a functional medicine practitioner. Is that you? Yes, it is. Hello, how are you today? Good, Dr. Meg Mill. I'm so happy we found you. Thanks for inviting us to this land. Can you tell us about it? What is this place? Well, this is a magical land where you are, everything that you feel is heard and and your practitioners listen to all the stories that you want to share and that you know are affecting you underneath. And we look into the root cause of all the health imbalances that you have and bring you back into a natural balance. We look at things and and, um, balance your body in a more natural way and look at underlying health conditions and how they're affecting all the symptoms you feel. So if you're feeling that pain, we look into what in your life has caused that pain and brought you to the point where you are today. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm really happy we landed here because that sounds so nice. Who doesn't want to be heard about what's going on with them? And uh, no one wants to feel crazy. So the fact that, you know, we arrived here and you're ready to kind of help people and fully listen to what's going on. Uh, thank you. And I know our listeners are very excited to be here. So um, would you like to tell us how did you end up getting to this land? Well, I actually ended up coming here from um, my own personal experience. I have a background in conventional medicine, and um, but I also was experiencing a lot of GI discomfort uh, and, and some other health issues. And I just kept going from practitioner to practitioner and getting, oh, you're fine. You have IBS or, you know, just kind of my my numbers looked in the normal range, which in functional medicine, we know normal isn't always optimal. So I was just sent away and and really to the point where I didn't even want to eat because I didn't know what was going to upset my stomach, what was going to make me feel terrible. But it, it was just really a hard place because I was never able to figure it out or get answers or feel heard. And so I started kind of making a shift at that point and started my own journey into looking into things that would help me. And because I knew there was something more going on. And in that journey, I found functional medicine and thought, wow, this is such a a different approach. And I wanted to look into more of that. So then I ended up pursuing my own certification so I could help more people after it made such an impact on my life. Wow. That's a, that's a great story. I'm glad you landed this way because I know for a lot of people listening, um, having that journey where you feel like you're not being heard and and not sure what to do. It's, it's a really daunting experience. So the fact that, you know, you yourself, uh, even we're in a medical background, we're able to kind of just explore deeper and to land here. That's fantastic. Wow. So how, how are you, how are you helping people now? Like, what is it like for someone to come in for a treatment with you? 
So we actually, generally I work with people over a three month period and we really, before we even meet the first time, we go through a detailed intake questionnaire and a detailed symptom questionnaire to really go back. We want to look at their whole life because, you know, that trip that you took when you were 16 um, to Thailand, which I maybe mean, we all wish we could get to Thailand, but any, you know, anyway, that those things can impact your health now. And you may not even be thinking that some things that have been triggers in your life could lead you to where you are today. You see like, oh, well, that happened, or those antibiotics that you took for your ear infections as a child, they could be affecting the way your microbiome is today. And so we really want to look back at all of your history and, and get to the root cause of what's going on and, and see you as a whole person. And also look, listen to your intuition and see, you know, often we, we know, we can feel, we have intuition about what what we're feeling. And so we really take both of those things and look at the root cause of, of what's bringing you to this point. And then we make a plan after that as a way to heal naturally and what we need to do to bring you back into balance. So we really want to take those things that are imbalanced, whether that's nutrients or your microbiome or your hormones or whatever the component is and balance that. And, and so that you can live without, med, you know, as feeling your best without medication, medication only when necessary for certain things. I don't want to say without medication in general, but we work on really doing things as most as naturally as we can. Got it. Okay. Um, I have to say, I like the fact that you not only are listening to the patient and what's going on with them, but also allowing them to listen to their intuition. Um, I think that's huge, especially as a body worker, um, helping people hone in on that. And I think the fact that you allow that, I think I, I, what I tend to see is that people may have their intuition and don't want to listen to it because they think it's wrong. And they may not have a professional to acknowledge it or to even know that it's correct or know the value of it. So I love the fact that you include that in your process. Yes. I had someone ask me, you know, as recently, like, well, do you you know, in treatment, let's say you, we just, we work with supplements, we work with food and we work in different things. And someone said, well, how do you tell your patients which one to do in a, in a certain circumstances? And I actually responded with, well, I ask them <laughs> because you know, sometimes what you, it, it, it's a team, you know, you know, what works for you. If I tell you, you have to do this and this is the only way, but that's not the way that's best for you. You're really not going to do it. <laughs> so it, it's really all about finding that and finding what works best for people and what you can really incorporate in your life. That's going to work for you to feel your best. Nice. Wow. That sounds really inviting. That's great. Yes. Uh, we are not the same person. No one's the same person and, and many things resonate with different people. So the fact that you take that into account is awesome. <laughs> Nice. So for people coming to see you, it sounds like they could have kind of any issues going on. Are there certain issues that you tend to focus on with your patients? Well, I, yes, I'm, I'm very passionate about help, helping people specifically with headaches and migraines, because um, when I first started, I noticed that people come to me for all different reasons. So I see pa pa patients for all different things. But I noticed that um, many of particularly the women that were coming to me, along with whatever, they may be coming to me for headaches and migraines, or even if they were coming to me for different things, were still suffering. So when we would go through that intake questionnaire, you know, people would say, I've had migraines my whole life, or I have had, and, and just feel like it's normal, like that that's just who they are. And, and it's okay that they have migraines and, and they just live with that. And it really made me aware of, wow, the people don't have to suffer in this way. They don't have to have those constant headaches and migraines that are affecting their life. And there's so many things to do. So I saw such drastic, once I started working with people, they would say like, oh, okay, and my headaches are gone. And my headache, and it was like amazing to them that their headaches were gone and they didn't have to, you know, take the Advil or the Tylenol or the prescriptions and they weren't getting headaches. So I really thought this is a huge area of impact for people that they can realize, you know, just even getting awareness that you can realize like, this is something that you don't have to suffer with. And it can impact your work. It can impact your, your family, your home life. So many aspects that we're just trudging through that they don't need to. So I really love, you know, working with those patients. 
Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, when it comes to headaches, I mean, everyone that's listening, someone can raise their hand, either they deal with headaches or they know someone that deals with headaches. I mean, that seems to be such a common issue in people's lives. And you're right. People are just living with it because they're like, oh, that's just, you know, that's just how it's been this whole time. So how would you say how, you know, if someone were to go to conventional, which is where you were, um, and to compare to what you do now for her headaches, like how is it different? So if you go, if you would just go to, let's say your PCP about headaches, now hopefully they're going to do some workups and make sure there's nothing more serious. But then, you know, the general practice is to give to people either an NSAID, which would be something like Advil or Motrin or Tylenol, or you can go to the trip dance and get some into prescription medication. But these these things are really just covering up the symptoms. They're not doing anything to promote, to help you actually stop getting headaches. They're just helping you get through the symptoms when you're having a headache. And really, we know that those medications, you know, Tylenol is hard on the liver. We know that Advil is disruptive to your GI tract. And, and so you're actually in some ways causing other, we say, downstream um it affects on your body in different ways from having to take these medications all the time. So um, I love this analogy because someone once told me if you take your car to a mechanic and you say my car is making a noise and they hand you a, and they hand you a pair of earmuffs and they hand you your keys <laughs> back, would you feel comfortable driving their car? <laughs> and no, think, no. And sometimes that's what we're doing with our bodies. So I think it was a great analogy of the way we're kind of conventionally treating headaches. We're just saying like, oh, here, cover up your symptoms, you know, get through it. And so we want to actually look into why you're getting the headaches. We know there's certain foods that trigger it. We know that there's a, you know stress, hormones, sleep effects. That you know, there's so many things that we're looking into that that we can balance in your life to help you just not get the the headaches anymore. So we're really figuring that out so they're gone rather than just band-aiding with a medication. Wow. Okay. And then, so you were saying earlier that uh, when you started working with people, you're finding that they are no longer having headaches, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I have people too, even that were on even daily medications that were causing, you know, drowsiness and other side effects that they were living with and still getting breakthrough migraines that are now medication and migraine free. So it's really Ooh. dramatic. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> that's why I was like, oh, wow, I need to reach more people with this because it's something that, you know, I, it's, you don't want to need to suffer. And it is so effective, like for people and it changes the quality of your life for, for sure. <laughs> For sure. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, especially I know people that deal with migraines and it, it does affect every aspect of your life. I mean, if you can't function, you can't mm -hmm. participate in living, you yes. know, at least not the way that you, you know, you're meant to, I think. So, wow. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's the passionate health advocate dance break. Now get up and shake your thing. What would you say to people now if they're if they're listening like, oh, you know what? Um, like I said, I was one of the people that rose my hand. I know somebody or I have headaches. So how would I get started? So the two things you can do that are free and really easy to add into your life to start right away is you can start focusing on hydration and making sure you're drinking enough through the day. A lot of times people can be dehydrated and not even know it. And, and we need enough, you know, electrolyte balance um, to get the water into our cells. So you actually want to sip your water through the day instead of you want to have, you know, they recommend, let's say half the body weight in water a day daily. And then you want to sip it throughout the day. So you're not just chugging a lot of water at mealtime to really get that cellular 
regular hydration. So I think that just kind of saying, be, paying attention to how much you're drinking um, is just one easy place to start. And then the other thing is actually sleep. There is studies that associate particularly migraines with um a decreased amount of REM sleep. So you want to make sure that you are doing the things that are creating a sleep hygiene routine. So you want to make sure that your your room is dark, quiet, and cool. So sometimes even putting like darkening shades or wearing a, a mask over your eyes or getting a fan just to kind of create that white noise and, and getting the temperature down so that you really get that that good sleep. It's also good to turn off all full spectrum lights. You know, I actually keep my phone outside of my bedroom. I don't even bring it in because it's so tempting. <laughs> so when yeah. we have that in our hands, it's hard to not, you know, it's tempting. So, you know, just try to get the, the full spectrum light down really an hour or two before bed so that you're not, your brain's not being simulated at that point. Um, even stopping, ca sometimes people need to stop caffeine at, at like around 2 p.m. Everyone, we all genetically metabolize caffeine differently. So that caffeine that you had earlier in the day could still be like inhibiting your sleep and you're not even realizing it because you're thinking oh well you know I had that at three o'clock but and we all have a different metabolism of it so it could still be affecting your sleep so getting rid of caffeine after 2 p.m and then also um quieting your digestion down in general trying not to eat things right before bed so giving yourself about three hours before you fall asleep um, of a fasting state of not eating just to really get that sleep. So those are two things, places that are just easy to start right now. You can do those in your, in your life at any time. Um, and, and really they can start to make a difference for you a little bit. Nice. Okay. That's good. That is something that's applicable to anybody listening or watching and, um, they could take action with that. So, those are the two general things. And it sounds like, you know, we're generalizing because everybody's different. Um, do you find that when you're treating somebody with headaches or migraines, um, is there, is it more than one thing or does it really vary? Cause you were saying it could be a hormone. It could be what they're eating. Are you finding that it's more hormonal sometimes or. So if you have your migraines, generally when it, the, hor the hormones are the cause, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a step back. I first, yes, often people have combinations. It's not generally for, for people, um, just one trigger. So it's not like, okay, I drink more water, my headaches are gone, you know, so it's finding mm -hmm. some of those triggers, which can be different for everyone. However, we know some of them from studies and data. So we can, I, we have a great place to start in knowing what certain triggers are for people. So, um, let's talk about hormones then. If you're getting your um, migraines either at ovulation or generally you think like, I know with a lot of women that get like, oh, I get that migraine every month before my period, like one or two days before my period, I just know I'm going to get a migraine. Then you most likely have hormonal migraines. And that happens because the um, in the last week before your cycle starts, your progesterone is dropping. And so is your estrogen, but often your progesterone drops faster than estrogen. So you're becoming estrogen dominant. And, and when you're estrogen dominant, that can more likely cause you to have those headaches or migraines. So you, the other thing that you can do in relation to that right away is really pay attention to what estrogens you're surrounded by. And we're actually all surrounded by so much, so many more hormones than we even think we are. So, you know, really getting like grass fed beef, you know, with organic milk and eggs and trying to get that, that hormone load down from you. And then even more in deep depth, like things like plastic, BPA, plastic, like would be in plastic cups, you know, their um, the nail polish, you know, really cleaning up your beauty products and your home products, because a lot of those products have what we call xenoestrogens. And so those are having estrogenic effects on our body. So by decreasing things outside, you're decreasing your overall estrogen load to help some of that balance. Got it. Got it. Okay, good. This is just getting uh, people aware of 
all the combination, kind of a great cocktail of what could lead to a migraine or, you know, major headaches. So, so that's good to know. It sounds like when you're dealing with a patient, you probably go through all of that, the testing with, with them to know, is that what you have like certain tests to know what triggers them? Yes. Well, yes, we do. Uh huh. We have, you know, one thing and you can get them fairly easily, but a food sensitivity test is very helpful because food sensitivities also are tricky for a lot of people and they can also lead to headaches. Um, so we can do that test to see what food your body's reacting to. Um, so you're, there's two different types of food reactions. We all think of that food allergy, which is an IgE antibody reaction. And that's when you get the hives and have trouble breathing and have a true allergy, whereas sensitivity is something that you're not actually allergic to, but your body's sensitive to, and that's an IgG antibody. So a food sensitivity test would be an IgG antibody test. And what's tricky about those is the reactions can come up about you know 24 to 48 hours after. So it's, it's harder for people to pinpoint okay, I, you know, I ate this piece of bread, but th- today I have, you know, yesterday, but today I have the headache, you know, or today I have the eczema or today I have the upset stomach or different things. They're, they're more non-specific symptoms. Um, and so you can just try to do an elimination diet. If you Google elimination diet, you, I'm sure you can find plans and books and everything. So when people do elimination diets, it's more of the most common food triggers for sensitivities, but um, we also do test the the antibodies. Um, And so then then you're actually, when you get that test, you have the data in front of you saying, okay, these are the foods that I'm showing reaction to, and we can eliminate those. So that's a component of what we do. And I also, um, for the hormones, I use a Dutch test, um, which I really is a very complete um, hormone test. That's my preferred um, choice, but I know that there's there's other hormone tests available too that you can use to test your hormones and see where all of your you want to make sure all of your estrogens are a balance with your progesterone nice nice yeah so those tests sound very good and i know uh with hormone testing right you're able to even uh evaluate the different times that you know the fluctuation in the body during different times so i like uh that you're very thorough (laughs) in all of that that's great great news um so if People are, you know, they're listening like, wow, okay, this is really in depth. I, I'm not even aware of all of this. How would they get started if they wanted to work with you? Do you treat people remotely? Do you treat people in person? Both, all the above? Yes, actually, I have a virtual practice. So I see um, people, both, and I actually have a physical office too. So I see some people in person, but I also practice virtually. So I see people all over the world actually. Um, And I schedule free consultations. So I schedule a free 15 minute consultation. So we can talk about what you have going on and see if functional medicine is the right fit for you. And I'm also actually, so I am so passionate about the headaches particular. I actually just, I see everyone in my practice from all, for all different reasons, getting to the root cause of health issues. But um, I'm really passionate about headaches and have seen such a difference that I'm creating a program um, starting in January. So you can um, find that information about that on my website, which is www.megmel.com, or you can go to happinessbeyondheadaches.com to get more information on that program. Oh, great. And we're we're definitely going to have it in the show notes. So everything that you're speaking on, those are going to be the resources and uh, do you also have a Facebook group or where else can people find you? Yes. Yeah, I have a, um, a Facebook group called the Headache Healing Club, and that's where I do sh- um, give specific information about headaches and, um, and, and it will have information about my program in that group also. And I also am on Instagram at Dr. Meg Mill, and I share um, information about functional medicine in general on that page, too. So if you want to follow me over there, you can get all things functional medicine <laughs> related from that feed. Excellent. That's great. So um, I'm glad that you're able to work with people in different parts of the world, because uh, basically people that are following the show, they're not only in the United States. Um, But I do have a question for you in general, because uh, part of this show is not only just educating about what you do, but also the field. So if someone 
um, isn't able to see you for some reason. Um, but they're like, I really want to work with someone and I actually feel comfortable going in person. So what do you recommend for, for people getting this type of service, functional medicine, where they live? I think I would just recommend Googling functional medicine near me. Okay. I have find people that come to me that have just, you know, search functional medicine practitioner near me, or you can, you know, just in your Google search, and then you'll get a list of people in your local area practicing. Okay. And, uh, and, and to like find like legit practitioners, right. And they're all kind of, uh, licensed under a certain. Well, you could go, you know what, you can just go to IFM, um, the Institute of Functional Medicine and search, find a practitioner actually. Okay. And then even like some of the testing places, like I know the Dutch test for not all the companies, but like if you're looking like for hormones and you feel comfortable and you've heard about the Dutch test that I mentioned, you can actually search on their website to find a practitioner. And those people that have that test in particular will also come up. But function, the Institute of Functional Medicine does have a practitioner database. So you can just go to IFM and, see, and search there, find a practitioner. And that would be a good way to to kind of vet who you're seeing. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Cause I, I, you know, a lot of people that are curious, you know, really want to help themselves out. So I just want to make sure that they got the, the right information for that as they go on their search. Absolutely. So, cool. Well, do you have anything else that you want to share with us? Any advice, words of wisdom um, in your field that you, you think a listener should hear? Yeah. I just think to say, be- believe in yourself and believe that, you know, I think they also the, the mind and the body are so connected. So sometimes when I'm, you know, working with people, the other thing we talk about is the belief that you will feel better. I think when some people have been in pain for a long time, you start to get a cycle of feeling that, you know, I'm not going to be able to heal. I'm not going to be able to get better. So really feel that belief that, you know, I even have people put an affirmation up on their mirror and just with some like dig deep and think something that's like, I, you know, love the the vessel of my body and I know that and I have the ability to heal. And sometimes just opening that door to yourself you will find things and modalities that will help you in that search and having that hope is, is so valuable. Oh, very well said. That is so true. I mean, I myself work with people in, in pain all the time. And I know when you live in that world, it's really hard to see the other side and how to get out of it. So just, that's a great, that's great advice for just letting people to just start living with that, that thought that life could be different. And that's why we, you know, we're at your land. So you can help people feel better and get better and also do it the way that makes sense to them. And just, you know, with the show is to let everyone know that things are possible. Just listen to what makes sense to you, what resonates and go for it with the right information, resources, and all these amazing practitioners out there like yourself. So. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining the Passionate Health Advocate Show with your host, Denise DeShutler. Like what you hear? Then subscribe, rate, and review this podcast.